Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the time is 11.48. Our next remote location is at Bosha Review. With the staff at Bosha, please introduce yourself. Sergeant Todd Roberts, security. Lori Hillbecker, mental health director of Seahawks. Thank you so much. Would the offender please give your full name in your Department of Corrections ID? Your ID number zero. Oh, I can hear. Yeah, we'll try to find one. I can hear. Would the offender please give us your name and oh, your name. Department of Corrections ID? My name is Vincent O'Reilly Navarre. My uh, DLC number seventeen thirty five ninety two. Thank you, Mr. Benson uh, Navar. You're here for a parole hearing this morning. Is that correct? I see. Excuse me. You're here for a parole hearing. Yes, sir. Uh, let me. My name is Alvin Roche. To my right is Ms. Pearl Wise. And to my left is Mr. Pete Freeman. Let me explain the process to you. I will read some information into the record. Once we verify that information, we'll conduct a parole interview with you. At the appropriate time, we'll ask the staff at Bosia to give us remarks. At the very end, before we vote, we'll give you a chance to make a brief statement. Do you understand the process? Yes, sir. Do we have any visitors? Oh, okay. Mr. Navar, you are a fifth felony offender. And you're currently 58 years old, is that correct? Yes, sir. And your offense is theft. You were multi bill as a third felony offender, and you were sentenced in St. Tammany, in St. Mary Parish, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you were sentenced on February 17, 2022, and you received a four year sentence. Your parole date was February 15, 2023. Your adjusted good time date is December 18, 2025. And your full term date, February 16th, 25. Is this information correct? Yes, sir. Your case has been assigned to Mr. Freeman. Would you please answer Mr. Freeman's question? Okay, Mr. Navar, how old are you? 58 years old. Well, what is your educational level? I graduated high school and I also went to the military for four years, U.S. Navy. Were you discharged honorably? Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. Um, how many years have you served on this charge? Oh, I, I've been here a year and a few months. Okay, so that's all you've been in jail on this charge is a year and a few months? Yes, sir. Okay, I had more over here. Um, yeah, okay, Mr. Navar. Um, you know, you got caught this time for stealing stakes, is that correct? You stole two stakes, I think the yeah. value 30 something dollars. Yes, sir. 
Okay. Um, were you going to sell these steaks for drugs or were you going to eat them? I was going to eat them. Okay. Um, were you working at the time of your arrest? Yes, sir, I was. Where were you working? I, I, well, I do uh, like maintenance work. I, I have a boss man, his name is Bruce Rivera. Me and him like work side by side together. Okay. If you were to happen to make parole today, would you go back to work with them? Yes, sir. And he's promised to keep your job? Yes, sir. Box me, how much does he pay you? Well, it says the, the word varies during the season, but I make at least about $125 per day, whatever we work. Well, that's pretty good. Why you had to steal the steaks? You couldn't buy them? I, that, that is. A question as I beat myself up with every day. All right. Uh, so it, it looks like you have a, a a drug or alcohol problem. Which one do you have? Drug or alcohol or both? Alcohol and I also do drugs. Okay. When's the last time you did drugs? Oh, that was before I come to jail. Like about, I don't know, about, about two, two, three days before I came to jail. Okay. What's your drug of choice? Cocaine. Okay. How long have you been uh, using cocaine? What age you think you started? Uh, like Mr. about. Brock. I'm going to say like about 30, 30 years old. How old were you when you started drinking? I was, I, I was a youngster. I was in, like in my teen years. Okay. Uh, you got an arrest record that goes back to 1998. Uh, in which you have uh, have had two revocations. Um, is this the first time you've done inpatient treatment? Yes, sir. So you've never had inpatient treatment before. I have went to a rehab before, but it was it was voluntary. Okay. Did you stay throughout the whole rehab yes, before? Yeah. Okay, how many day program was it? It was a 28 day program. Okay. Counselors, how is he doing in his treatment? Is he accepting it? Uh, does he seem to be getting anything out of it? Um, yes, sir, he definitely does. He uh, attends all of his classes, does his homework. He has earned one positive behavioral report for outstanding participation in one of his treatment groups. Um, he's unsure about doing or receiving a Vivitrol injection to help with his alcohol use, but he, he does listen to um, the benefits of it and he is considering it. Um, you know, you, you community attitude, uh, and of course, there's nothing you can do about that. And it's mainly because you're a vendor class, you got opposition from the sheriff, the DA. No comment from the chief. Uh, your family's unopposed. Alberta Navarre. Uh, she's, and she's going to have a place for you to stay. What is going to be your sobriety plan? If you get out? How would you stay off of drugs and alcohol? See, this would be the first time I ever got out of jail that I got inside of my head that I would not do drugs or alcohol again. Okay, they're, they're, I, I'm thinking about programs and like they got um alcohol abuse and, and a, a, a meetings and um in it means like right right around our um in the area where I stay at Slide out. It's, it's with their walking distance from my house. That that would be my next question. Why do you believe you would make it this time? Well um so you're just tired and you, you think you're gonna you're gonna be able to abide by uh the rules of society? Yes, sir. I, I got to the to the point where I, I realized it's it's not worth it. I don't waste a lot of my life doing something like shoplifting, which is, is uncalled for. I can't do it no more. Yeah, you got a bunch of minor offenses, but there's so many of them. Uh, I, Let's see. 
classes. Uh, you've taken a, a few classes. Um, what class do you think you got the most out of? What, uh, which one you learn the most from? Is it this uh, inpatient treatment? Okay, well, I see, I pay attention to all my classes, and uh, I, 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 learned, I, I learned a lot by dealing with, um, they taught me a lot of things that I didn't recognize at first while I was free. But I, I'm able to, to to grasp that now, and I, I plan on like applying that when I get out of here. You know, I, I learned about um like triggers and and uh, a whole bunch of things like risk factors that that things that I wasn't aware of before, and I plan on using that when I get out of here. Ma'am, uh, the program, is he gonna, on schedule to complete it in August? Yes, sir. He's still scheduled to complete August 25th. Um, your risk is moderate. moderate. Your need is moderate. Uh, staff, have y'all had any disciplinary problems since he's been there? No, sir. We haven't had any issues so with him at all. I have no further questions. Ms. Wise. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Vincent, uh, in your with that 56 years of living, how long would you say you've been in jail? How, how much of that year spent in jail? If you had to add it all up. Uh, I want to say like about maybe seven or eight, maybe all together. Okay, about eight years all together. Yeah, some, some of those were like for dealing with child support. Okay. Okay. Uh, what would be your uh, your release plan? How would you support yourself? Oh, I will go to work. I, I still got a job out there. And I, you know, I'm going to live with my mom. I'm, you know, mom about going to be 85 in, in August. So I'm going to do a lot of, a lot of errands for her and, you know, doing things around the house, you know, things I've never done before. I was too busy doing other things. Uh-huh. Okay. So you will go back with the man working working odd jobs. Uh do you have trades? Well, what do you know how to do? Well, I'm a carpenter. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I can do a lot of things. I cut grass, I do detailed cars. And there's nothing really I I can't do. Okay. All right. Oh, right, that's all I have. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you, Ms. Wise. Mr. Benton, you want to make a closing statement? Excuse me? Do you want to make a closing statement? Sure, I, mean, I just want to plead to y'all that if, if you grant me parole, I, this, I'm through with, through with stealing and all of this, and I, I will never come back to I plan, I plan on applying everything I learned out of this, out of this, um, this, this, this program. To better myself when I get out of here, and I and I I I'm just done I'm through with it. In other words, you're tired. Tired. Okay. Is the panel ready to vote? I'm ready, sir. Yeah. Mr. Freeman. Okay, uh, Mr. Benson. You, you know, you look at your criminal history, and it's scary. I mean, you have a ton of arrests. You're your fifth felony offender. Um. You know, you don't have much violence on your uh, on your rap sheet. I think you were honest with me today. I really do. I don't think you're lying. It's just if you can can do the things you say you're going to do when you get out there is what I'm concerned about. But uh, as my fellow comrade, Ms. Wise, would say, I, I, I'm going to take a chance on you. Uh, so I'm gonna grant you a parole conditional on completing that substance abuse program. And I want special conditions of a curfew from six to nine. And I want at least three AA or NA meetings a month, a week. And I, if I was you, I'd find me a good sponsor, somebody I can lean on, so I could call if I start slipping back into my old habits. 
okay? And don't be afraid to tell your probation officer if you feel yourself slipping away, because they rather try to go out of jail, but once you get convicted, it, it's out of their hands, okay? Sir, right. would you go over your conditions again? Um, curfew six to nine and uh, three AA or NA meetings. Thank you, sir. And final sponsor. The final sponsor. Mm -hmm. Ms. White. Uh, Mr. Vincent, I, I'm, I'm really I'm concerned about you. You know, you got some uh, DWI charges pending in, in, in city court in Slidell. Uh, you know, those are, that's very concerning. Um, and you got an 84 year old, 85 year old mother, I mean, yeah, 85 year old mother. And you, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take a chance on you too. That's what I'm feeling like. I feel like I'm taking a chance on you. You have the skills. I don't be nobody's fault but your own. You can't save nobody help. You got the skills now. Stay drug free. And I concur with the special conditions set by my colleague uh, with the added that you have random drug screens by PNP. Did you work for a guy that'll let you off when you need to? When the officer calls for you to come in for a drug screen, you should be able to get the best wishes to you, sir. Mr. Benson. Yes, sir. Listen, listen to me, listen to me good. You are fifth to only offender. You're 58 years old. You got convicted as an original offender this time. If he ever convicted of another felony, you'll probably spend the rest of your life in jail. This is an opportunity for you to become a productive member of society. Please take advantage of this opportunity. Sir. I'm going to agree with my colleagues and we're going to vote to grant your early release under the same conditions as articulated by Mr. Freeman. The early release has been granted. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank y'all. Well, okay, that is our only case at Bolsha Medium. So stay to join at 12.05 p.m. You have a good day, and we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you. If he was really stole those two steaks to eat them, my heart goes out to that man. We saw someone else get locked up for stealing lobster. And it ended up being like $800 a lobster. And he claimed that he threw it out and didn't know what it was worth. And some of you commented, "He, you're too naive, man, do. He knew what, you know, he sold them for some rocks. Now, the board seemed to believe him that when he said he took him to eat him. He also admits to being an addict, and they think he's an addict going to three AA and a, a week. And I mean, he has this long history of crime because of it, I assume. No violence in his history. And I'm all for letting him go. And, and I, I think they set up the safeguards that they that they want to help him make sure he doesn't come back because he can go away for life but for me there's nothing the you know if you want to say that he he was hungry and he took those steaks so he could eat them and i know that there's a lot of problems with with the petty theft and the cost that it takes on the the toll that it takes on society and you see what's happening in these cities that are light on crime. You know, New York is the first example that comes to mind. But to spend all that time in jail, and I get it that he's an habitual offender and, and revocation and all that stuff, but just...
doesn't leave me. It just leaves such a bad taste in my in my in my mouth. And again, I'm happy to let him out. I think it was they did all the right things. And Mr. O'Shea, you listen to me. You listen to me. Good. You know that it's serious when Mr. O'Shea steps in and says that. You better listen up. Is he just tired? Is he just not? Is he has he had enough, or is he gonna get tripped up and end up with another charge? And yeah, he could get habitual. He could get. That could be it. I hope we don't see him again. I'll tell you that. I hope we don't see him again. And on that note, please do the YouTube thing. Help the channel grow. It makes a big difference. And with that, I'll let you go.